Hey everyone, welcome back in the second video of the web cache deception series. And today we'll be talking about how delimiters work and how origin and cache servers interpret delimiters and how we can exploit the web cache deception vulnerability. So we will look at the both Sugar lab, but let's first understand some basics. So a delimiter is a character or sequence of characters that is used to separate parts of the data so the system can parse them correctly. Let me show you an example. So if you have something like HTTPS colon slash as example dot com slash profile and then question mark ID equals something a random number. So over here, this question mark is actually a delimiter. And then we have the parameter. So this thing here is helping in dynamic content generation, but you get the idea. Sometimes delimiters can also be uh, forward slash or hash or semicolon. And we will look how the server and CDNs interpret this so we can test for the web cache deception vulnerability. So here I have some list for how different CDNs interpret these delimiters. So first one we have is null byte, which is person 00. And we will see how different CDNs interpret null byte. So first one up is open light speed, which interprets person 00 and it truncates the path. For example, if we have slash profile person 00.css, it will interpret as slash profile it means it will just going to ignore that the cache key we just added in the end. In this case, you cannot really test for web cache deception. So in Akame and Fastly CDN, person 00 is treated as literal. So if you have slash profile person 00.css, so it will be cached with this particular cache key and it will be treated as a unique resource. So what happens here is if you send this particular request to the server, the origin server is going to give response for this request, but the CDN is not ignoring this part. The CDN is taking this part as literal. So it's going to still give the original response as it was giving for slash profile, which contains sensitive information. It means in cases of Akame and Fastly CDNs, we can use null byte cache key to test for web cache deception. Now, in case of Apache, Nginx, and Node.js, it rejects or sanitizes the person 00, 00 null byte and it returns 404 or 400. So these things you can keep in mind. The second one is percent 2f, which is the encoded form of forward slash. So, so in Nginx, if you're giving slash API percent 2f and then v1, it gets decoded and it becomes slash API slash v1. So this can lead to path confusion means web cache deception is also possible here. In case of Apache, it directly rejects the encoded slash and you'll get 404. Now, in case of CloudFront and Akame, it might get cached. So this can also lead to confusion. You can try that out. Now, the third one is a semicolon. Apache and Tomcat treat semicolon as literal. So for example, if you are testing for web cache poisoning and you provided this path at the end of the original path, like semicolon A equals B, which is clearly a cache key, give the response, the origin server, it's going to give the response for index.php, but the CDN is going to take this as literal and it's going to serve the response for the original path that contains sensitive information. So again, it's possible here. Now, in case of Fastly and Cloudflare, they include it as cache key as well. So it is possible here as well. Now, in case of Spring Boot, that is Java, it parses semicolon as matrix parameter. So it ignores it in routing by default. The fourth one is query and fragment. That is the question mark and hash. We know that this character is used to specify the query parameters as we saw in the first example that I showed you. So it starts with the query string and it is included in cache key by CDNs like Clawfare and Akame. And the second one is hash, which is never sent to the server because it is irrelevant to the server side cache logic. Now the other two delimiters are tab and space encoding. 
So we have percent %09 for tab and percent %20 for space encoding. So in case of Akame, it normalizes or strip white space characters. For example, if you have slash pot and you added your delimiter like person 20 img.js. So person 20 is the space. It will get normalized to slash pot space img.js. So what happens in this case, the server might treat these differently, but the cache will normalize this and still serve the old content that might contain sensitive information. So you can use this as a bypass technique. You can put in do forward slash and it will get normalized to a single slash. And if that one is used in the cache key, then good for you. Okay, now it's time to solve the lab so you can get a better idea of how it's done. So I have this lab open here and let's go to my account. And log in with Weiner and Peter. And here we have the API key. If we go back to the HTTP history in slash my account, we can see that the API key is revealed in the HTML body. Keeping this in mind, we have the request that is revealing sensitive information in the response. Let's send this request. And over here, we can see the server is Apache. Keeping this in mind, let's try a few things. First, let's try forward slash AB and send the request. Here, it says not found. Good, it's totally ignoring that thing. Means the forward slash. So this delimiter is not working for us. Let's try something else. How about question mark A equals AB dot JS. So here we have question mark as a delimiter. Let's send this request. And this time we are getting the response along with the API key, but we don't see any indication of if it is getting cached or not. For example, there is no response header like X cache hit or miss or something like that. Let's try one more delimiter that is semicolon and send the request. This time we can see a response header x cache miss. Let's send this request again and it says x cache hit. And again we are getting the API key means the semicolon delimiter is getting cached. So this cache key is working for us. But to exploit the victim, we have to get a fresh cache key. Let's change this to XYZ. And we are going to copy the URL. And we're going to go to the exploit server. And over here, let's type the script tag. And inside, we're going to type window.location equals. And then we're going to paste the URL. Store. And then deliver exploit to victim. Make sure to perform this in Chrome browser. Okay, now let's try to visit this particular endpoint. And here we have the API key for Carlos, means when the victim visited it, the response was cached for Carlos user. So we can copy this API key and submit the solution here. And this solved the lab. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.